I'm Johnny Thor, and I'm the District Robotics Facilitator and Instructor for Grades 1 through 8. I have been with the Greenville ISD for, the, for nine years now, and have been instrumental and been with VEX since its inception in 1995. I have been assistant and head coach of the Robo Rangers, and now I've moved down to establishing a robotics program from the elementary through the eighth grade. Today I'd like to show you what we do in, a, in our practice and how things, how things normally work. And if once you take a look at this, it will look like organized chaos to you, but this is a typical day of building it at Greenville Middle School. What we're doing is picking up two, two game objects. We're picking up a nine inch cube and a nine inch high section called a sky rise. The robots will pick up the cubes and they will score them on goals of various heights. Of course the lower goals are easier to score on, the higher goals are harder to score on. The sky rise sections are picked up from an auto loader that a student places a sky rise in. When they, fin when they finish, they will actually place a sky rise here and they can keep stacking the sky rises as high as the robot will allow them. Then they can come back and score cubes on top of the sky rise. So basically what they have to do is they have to build their own goal. So next I'd like to go around and start taking and showing you some different robots that we have and see some different what we call pickup mechanisms, how they pick up the cubes and sky rises, and how they raise the robot up to the various heights in order to score cubes. Okay? What they're doing here is they're starting out in their, this is called a scrimmage, they're actually going to play a match. And we'll let you, play, let you see this first to give you an idea of what these robots are trying to accomplish. This is 15 seconds of what's called an autonomous mode where they were, the students have written a program to, in fact they're not, they're, they're playing, they went straight to driver control. So they will do two minutes, it's a two minute match for, the, for these robots that are on the field and actually this robot in front of us is building sky rises. There's another one to the right, he scores cubes on the go. This is, in a match you would have two robots together working together against two other robots to see if they can score the most points. And it looks real easy to build the sky rises and score cubes on the goals. But in the fall when they're trying to figure this out, there's a lot of, a lot of work goes into this. So, he can, the one on the left, he can build five out of seven possible sky rises. Then he goes back and you see he's scoring a cube. He starts scoring cubes on the goals. So he goes around, he picks up a cube. And this robot can do either one. And he, he partially scored a, a cube on a go, so what he's done, he's created more work for himself because he has to go back and knock that cube down before he just to score the next one. And if we look on the other side, this robot over here, he continues to score. He's scoring on a medium, on a high go right now. When you play the game, you get various different, various parts, points for scoring different objects. So you get more points for, for scoring, building a high rise and scoring in the sky rise. And then you get different points for scoring on the go. And if you have two colors on the go, you get a bonus point for owning a go, which is has the, the, the color that's, that's stacked on top. Okay. We have actually three different types of raising mechanisms that we use here. This is called a, this is called an eight bar because it has eight bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it is a rectangle. It's actually four rectangles stacked on top of each other. So the kid, this is how the kids start to learn learn math and how that's applied. This robot here, the one in the back is the same. This robot that you saw over here that was scoring cubes on the goal, it's, it's the same kind of raising mechanism. This one right here is called, the technical term is called a reverse fur bar, which is actually two rectangles stacked on top of each other and they raise from different ends to get, to get the height. As you can see, and they have an air cylinder 
that actually causes the little tire to expand and contract and as they build. Okay. As you can see, we're very fortunate that we have several parents that come in and help. We have, and the, the parents are, are engineers from L3, which get, gives the students a, a more professional looking background or, or perspective from that, which actually helps. This, this robot is called, we call it an extension ladder. Would you, can you raise it up for him? Wait a minute, we'll, he'll let, he has to let it sink up. No pressure, no pressure. Okay, just turn it on. You good? Just turn it on. It uses a serpent. In your car, you have a serpentine belt on your motor. This actually raises the various stages using the same concept of a serpentine, serpentine chain. And so we have an extension ladder that raises up. And he can do, he's another robot that can do both. He can build the sky rises and put cubes on the, on the go. And they have worked on it to make the, through, through gearing to make the lift faster. And then, and then makes it easier in order to, to lower it. I'm Coach Casper. I am the VEX coach for the Greenville Middle School. Um, and these are my students here. We've got a couple of kids that are working on some of our computer aspects of our program. Um, we have Wyatt here who is working on his team's website right now. And what they've done, in, done with this is they've gone on a service called Weebly and they have created a website for each one of their robots. And they've introduced their team through this website and they're introducing some of the aspects of their robot so that a person from outside our program could be able to go and see what it is about their robot that makes them special, what it is about their team that makes them special, um, without having to uh, sit down and have a full introduction. And so they've created this from the ground up. Um, we've been working on these about a week now, and they're, they've been quite successful with these. And it's linked to our website, uh, which is gigabots2148.com, and that way each team can be introduced. And then we have Kylie over here, who is working on our programming aspects. And she is currently writing the autonomous program for their robot, which this is their robot here. The autonomous program is, is a program that will be written uh, and used in the first 15 uh, seconds of our matches. And so she right now is going through and checking the code and she's adding a little bit of variables here and there wherever they need to be uh, to adjust the, the autonomous so that it will read, then read and do what they're wanting to do, either score on the post or place uh, sky rise sections, those kind of things where they need to go. The goal here, how many, Kylie, how many points are you trying to get? Uh, at least one sky rise. Okay, so right now they're trying to build at least a sky rise section, which is four points. Uh, I think our, most of our goals eventually is to get about six to eight points per uh, autonomous mode, and that's what we're really working on right now. Okay, right now I'm about to cut nine holes off the sea channel because I, uh, we have a prototype over there and it's kind of like a dirty piece of metal, it's all banged up, so we're going to make a nice fresh piece of it to, um, to start to work better and smooth smoothly. Clean it up. Yeah. Okay, so he just cut down a piece of C-channel here, and now he needs to cl uh, clean up the edges because right now you've got a real sharp edge, and one of the requirements here is, of course, that the robots aren't dangerous. And so he's going to go ahead and clean up these, these sharp cuts where the metal's really been kind of melted and it, with the sander here, and then that way it'll give a good professional clean edge. Okay, go ahead.
Once you get the edges, let's take it over to the belt sander and we'll finish cleaning up there, okay? Yeah, that's good. Let's take it over to the belt sander and we'll get it cleaned up. Okay, the last step for us to clean up a piece of metal is to bring it in here on the belt sander. And what he's going to do is he's just going to basically polish up the edges here, get round them up a little bit, and keep it from being uh, rough so that it has that nice professional edge. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And in the long run, we get an edge on here that looks as close as we can on both sides to a nice, clean, fresh cut edge. There you go. Thank you. If you look around the room, you see how engaged the students are. This is actually not your typical, what you think of as a quiet classroom. There's always a lot of noise that goes on. But when you see the students working and engaged, this is what we're looking for. And one of the things I'm more proud of is what happens, what happens in class. We're, in the, we're going to run, demonstrate a, a, a high-rise match for you. In order for us to do this, we use, we, in order to run the autonomous and the driver control mode, we have to use what's called a competition switch that we hook to one of the, to a joist, to the main joystick of one, one of, the, of each team. And if you look, you'll see on this side, you can enable or disable a particular mode. And over here, you have your different modes, which is driver on top and your autonomous on the bottom. So to start the match out, we would have this switch autonomous and disabled. The MC would say driver's ready, match starts in autonomous in three, two, one. They flip the, the switch up to enable. They would run for 15 seconds. When they tell them to stop, they flip the switch back down to disable. Then to go to driver control, they flip this switch up over here to driver. Then they'll say driver, driver control in three, two, one. They'll flip the switch like this, and then, then their joysticks can't control the robot. Normally in a robot, if you look, there are two joysticks. Just so I'll get you two joysticks. Here, guys, show us, the two jo show us your two joysticks. Bring them over here. Just a minute. Okay, there's actually two joysticks. This is the main joystick, and this, come on over, tell them what you do with this joystick when you drive. Joystick right here, this controls the base, um, the wheels of the robot, then this one controls the arm and the intake to pick up tubes and raise and lower the arm. Okay, so the, these, two, each two drivers have to actually communicate and get along with each other because they have to, to work together in tandem. They make it look easy because they practice quite a bit, but it's not as... You should come back in the fall when they first drive and watch it and we all wonder, oh my God, will they ever figure this out? And then within about an hour to an hour and a half, they're, they're on the way. Because you guys do play video games, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tessa, Tessa's XRMC, she will start the match. We're going to run autonomous and driver control. Okay? Red Alliance ready. Autonomous in three, two, one. And as you see, all four robots are moving, trying to do something, trying to do something, score cubes on a go. Okay. Okay, jump Thomas over. Thomas over. What the referee will do in the match is they will determine whether the red alliance or the blue alliance won the autonomous, autonomous mode. The winner of the autonomous mode gets 10 bonus points, which is big. So Tessa, who won the who won the time? So blue wins because they have one cube on the they have one cube scored on the ground. What do they got? Two scoops? Two scoops. Okay. So now we're going now Tessa's gonna to start the driver control section of it, which is a minute and forty-five. Okay. Driver control in three, two, one. Now when they were showing you what the controllers are doing now, the students are actually have control of the robots. And we have one robot. We have team 2148C is actually scoring a red cube in front of us. 2148A is building a sky rise. And these are two these are two red partner robots. The blue side, we have 2148E here trying to score trying to score a goal on a, a cube on a goal. 
Then we have 2148 Ethel there with a different picket, pickup mechanism building his sky ride. So, give us a minute, give us with a minute. Okay, we have a minute left in the match. So we'll start single. As you see, we've, there's a lot of action going on. You have different robots. Each robot is trying to, to finish their task. And it's critical what happens at the end of a match because that could be the difference between winning and losing. We have 30 seconds left, so we're in crunch time. Just finish and see what we can do. You have 2148E across. He's placing blue cubes on the various goals, so he gets bonus points. 2148A is finishing scoring cubes on their high rise. 2148C is trying to pick up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time over. Time's over. Okay, Tessa, will you count up the score, get some help, and we'll give you the score of the match. Okay. Each of these yellow sky rises are worth four points. So, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and then twenty. Plus, each of these cubes on the yellow sky rises are worth four points. So then, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty. So that's forty. And then each of these are worth two points and if they're on the top of the post, if they're the top cube on the post, they're worth three. So this is three and this is three. Um, so 46 and then this, there's one cube on the floor goal over here and another cube over here. So that's two points which is makes it 48 for the Red Alliance. Okay. So for the Blue Alliance you have um, their sky rise, which again is each worth four points, so four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Plus, you have two cubes on posts over here, which are each worth three, and then two more, four more over here, so that's twenty plus three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, so that's thirty eight. Plus one right here, which is 39. So the red score was 48. The blue score was 39, which means the red score won. Plus autonomous. Who won autonomous? We did. We did. Okay, so blue won autonomous, so they get an extra 10 points, which means they actually have a score of 49. And since red had 48, that means that blue won the match. And as you as you noticed, when she missed the ten points, one of the drivers for the blue side pointed that out rather quickly, so they knew how to count the score correctly. The ki the students do know do know this very well, and they take this take this seriously, and we're glad that they do. Our, these are our two mentors from Team 2148A. We have Kyle Mitchell, that work, that's an engineer at L3. We have Robert Burns, who works over at Daisy Foods in, in Garland. And actually, his job is very, very practical for what we do in robotics because he repairs equipment over there. And when one of their robots breaks down on the semi-line, they need to see him rather quickly. <laughs> so what I would like for him to do, for, for, for Kyle and Robert both, is to explain just a little bit about what they do to help the kids and then let, the, let them introduce themselves to you and explain, explain the robot to you and the features of the robot. Uh, primarily involved in helping with their programming. Okay. Primarily helping them try to design and rebuild their robot to do what it needs to do to compete. On this team, we have we have four eighth graders and one lone seventh grader. So he he keeps all the eighth graders in line and makes sure they do what they're supposed to do. But we're very proud of these students. What I'd like for you to do is introduce yourself first and tell me what your and give us your name. My name is Yonsu Jung and I'm the coach. My name is Jordan Fimter. I'm the um, scout. I'm in the eighth grade too. My name is Tessa Mitchell. I'm the programmer and I'm in eighth grade. My name is Trenton Burns. I'm the arm driver and I uh, yeah. I'm the base driver and I am in eighth grade. <laughs> My name is step up, step up front. My name is Austin Burns and I drive the arm and I'm in seventh grade. Okay, Tessa, Tessa will now explain some features of the robot. Okay, so um, we have our robot, we have a reverse four bar, which um, is our lift here. Pick this up. 
So that um, is very steady and it um, it doesn't fall apart like a lot of the other reverse four bars do and it helps us reach to all the posts and up to five sky rises. Six. Six sky rises. Okay. Well, so when a match starts we bring it around and then we have pneumatics hooked up to it so it'll push down so we can get inside of the sky rise and then it pushes up to grip the sky rise and we just repeat this process to score up to six sky rises. This is, this is a different team because the team prior to us had, had four eighth graders plus one seventh grader so they had a lot of experience. This is a team of all seventh graders so this is their first year to actually build a metal vex robot. I'm Shine Sailing, I'm in seventh grade and I'm the scout for it. I'm Heaven Phillips, I'm in seventh grade and I'm the journalist and coach. I mean she works on the website and the engineering notebook. Uh, hi, I'm Nick Stromberg and I drive and build. I'm Keen Smith, I'm in seventh grade and I'm the secondary programmer and I build. I'm Dallas Davies and I built the drivetrain and I drive the drivetrain. A little different aspect, all robots have to have what's called an engineering notebook, which is actually like a diary of their journey from when they first started to design a robot to where it is now. So I'd like heaven to show you theirs because they, they have a good ro engineering notebook first. Right here is our section on how we designed the drivetrain, what design process we went through, how we figured out what gear ratio and what kind of drivetrain would be best. Like for ours we picked a direct drive which is just one motor per wheel. Some people do like gears and um, two motors and gears for their drivetrains and ours makes ours fairly fast but it's also really strong and durable which is good which is really good when you're in a competition because the stronger you are the easier it is to just kind of get past other robots. Do you have any other feature you'd like to show in the notebook? Uh, An engineering notebook is what engineers if you're a professional engineer working like at L3 they will keep notes of their of their projects that they're working on. So this this has a, a practical application for them. We'll see what else you'd like to talk about. Um, this is our section from our last tournament, the Flower Mount Tournament. It was the one that we won and qualified again for regionals. Um, regionals is the state level tournament and we're really excited to be able to go there because that's our gateway to nationals and to world. It shows um, what we did, how we picked our alliances, it's got some pictures of um, what we did. It's like right here is um, right here is our team, and our in the background is the alliance selection. Right here is our team when we won, um, and in the background you can see our score. Where's the blue right here? If you can read that. Um, right here is our team and our alliance, and we're all taking a picture with our trophies and we were really excited about winning that tournament because qualifying for regionals is a really big deal. How did you figure your alliance? Our scout and our PR person went through the uh, they went through the possible people who we were allied with in the qualification rounds um, the possible people who would work best with our robot like our robot usually only does cubes so we were looking for um, robots that stack sky rises really well and robots that really had co compatible autonomouses and just were overall compatible with our robot. Okay, we'll let Nick explain some features of the robot now. Nick, are you ready? Huh? Nick, you're, you're up, Nick. Stand around to the side so they can see you. Don't be bashful. Right. Let's talk about different features of the robot, like your pickup mechanism, your lifting mechanism, how you do that. All right, so this is our robot uh, for 2148E, and um, we have a six bar here uh, that lifts the cubes that we pick up with our foot here, as we like to call it, and that just lowers, and we can pick up cubes by pinching it right here, and then we raise this arm up, and we score on the cube, or we score on the post. What is your lift mechanism called? Uh, what is it? What is this called? 
It's called a eight bar. Okay. Can you raise it up and show? Well, we can't do this. Mm. Turn around, show them in the back. How do you power? How would you power your the eight bar? Okay, so right here we have our brain, which has uh, wires connecting to sensors and motors. We have four motors connected to our lift that um, raises the chain and lifts the arm. Uh, we have sensors uh, on right here and on the bottom here and those keep it from going up too far just so we don't break our chain. Okay. Thank you Nick. I hope you have enjoyed what you've seen today. This is a what is goes on in a typical work session for our robotics team. This Saturday we will be here from 8 to 12 North Texas Regional Tournament. The North Texas Regional Tournament is a robot has to have won a, been a tournament champion at a local tournament or they have to win a particular judge the judge the award. This year we have taken teams to a total of six tournaments. We're lucky, lucky we have six tournament champions and we have two other robots that have been invited been invited because of their their body of work or performance during these local tournaments to the regional tournament. That regional tournament will be held in Greenville High School on Saturday, February the 21st. It will start at approximately 8.30 with opening ceremonies. We should be finished by 6 o'clock. Certain winners out of this tournament will be advanced to the VEX World Championship Tournament held April 15th through the 18th in Louisville, Kentucky this year. These qualifiers from this region will compete with teams from around the world in the United States and other countries such as China, New Zealand, England, Mexico, Puerto Rico. And it's a definitely, definitely a sight to see with all the different cultures and the dresses that are there. We have four teams that are going to compete for the U.S. Open National Championship April 7th through the 9th in Omaha, Nebraska. You have, you have seen two of the teams that are going to, to the U.S. Nationals because these were two of the teams that were explaining their robots to you. If you, if you would like any other information about the Greenville Middle School Robotics, please do not hesitate to call me. My telephone number in my office is 903-408-4432. Also, you can email me. It's T-H-A-R-P-J-R at GreenvilleISD.com. An easier way to contact me is to go to the Greenville ISD website, go to the Parent tab, and look under and click on Robotics, and it has my email and my telephone number for you. We hope you'll have time and to come to the tournament and see what 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 this is really about, and see how excited the students get when they're competing.